Please keep praying uh, for uh, Carrie's budget. She has prayer for Dan's dad and all, and it's Jessica, and also uh, for uh, Dawn Morgan. Please remember her. She'll be having a pet skin this week, which is going to be the last week's daughter. So please keep praying for her. Miss Sarah's in the hospital with the flu, so please pray for her.
remember Faith uh, going back and that was just a tender chick by her eye there, so we put it to the board on that. It's just for us to pray for her. Please continue to pray for my wife and my family and those that are sick and not here that I have several lunch back. Amen. And uh, Bruce said he talked to the video this morning, but uh, well, I guess we did do it, but he's going to try to come with her and run over the mother. So that's when they're going to be asleep and go away with her. She prayed for me for uh, Also, I got a friend of mine, he came a while back and asked me anything, or he's sick. We don't know yet what it is, the flu or what he might have. Mm -hmm. well, Ashley Infinger, that's the member of the city. Anyone else on this side? Over here? Hopefully she's coming along. They still don't know anything though about it.
keep praying uh, for one another here at Oak Grove and uh, hold each other for the Lord. I know this is where you got some people see some on the road traveling. So let's, let's remember this and pray for the Lord. And also the church as a whole to keep praying for our fellow believers to uh, continue to pray for uh, folks in the nursing home and folks that's laboring there. Of course, like Greg said, it's like the Kenya so let's pray for our nursing homes. For Miss Sheridan, Miss Annette, for Linda, for Betty Stafford, for Michael Ross, for Charles Tate, for different ones we know, all different folks. Our youth here and their leaders keep praying for them, for the Lighthouse uh, ministry that God will continue to help them as they go forward. Uh, also for the Highway Shepherd ministry. Our missionaries are in the field, our hospitals, our first responders you know, need our prayers. Those in the jails and the prisons, the labor there, there, our nation and the healing that we need. For those that are in authority, as God's command is, we pray for. And I would be, even as I say, we know we don't sure don't agree with everything, but we're praying for those folks in those positions. Our military and their families keep praying for them. They remember Israel. Earl was talking about this morning in Sunday school. Let's pray for them and ask God to continue to help them. I think you said somewhere around 100 a day of this war is going on with a lot of part of it. Also, for the folks in Afghanistan and Ukraine, keep praying for them. And of course, as I mentioned, Sister Ann Parker, to remember her and hold her up before the Lord. And we've got a lot of folks on our prayer list, so I know that. Dean's not here this morning, other than six. So I'm not sure how they're doing. They're better. Anybody heard? How they're fair? That's just remember. But we got quite a few in our churches. We got a lot of sickness going around. So we want to pray for one another. Hold each other for the Lord. And we got a lot of folks on here. Of course, I said we'll call these all on Wednesday night, each of these nights. What else that you got to keep the things you want to make known before we start the process? Dad Wilson. He's dealing with treatments now, right? Dad Wilson is the one who's in the room. What else? For Brandon uh, French, he's uh, in remission, which is a great blessing. Now, he was there the other night, I think, on the beach. And I thank God I was blessed to see him. It was really good. Mm -hmm.
Lord, you'd be pleased to dwell with us today and breathe on us that we might feel the presence and the power of the Holy Ghost of God that we might realize it's not about us, it's about Him. But thank God somewhere along the journey He had granted sin. He said, you Gentiles, you've got that chance. You have that blood shed for you also for all all color, all creed, all religion, everything. Praise God. He died for all. And to know that. And Lord, we're praying for these and in the military. Uh, Lord, these in, in, in Washington, D.C. And all these, uh, Lord, that need to touch. Uh, we're asking God that you touch our homes, uh, our families, uh, our schools, uh, our churches, uh, the places that we work in. All these things that we might realize it's not about just Sunday morning. It's about every day of the week. It's about 24-7 that we serve a God. Praise God in these days and times that we serve Him. You see, it's not easy, no, but it's always, it's always, it's always right. And that's why we have Jesus for that. Because we're going to stumble. We're going to fall and fell along the way. But praise God, keep looking up to Him. Ask to Him for forgiveness. And He's just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Father, we praise you today and love you now with our brother as he brings the word and just touch it and minister to him. All he says, labor and work in this church. Lord, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
ready to read there, I want to remind you that you know, we, it's our second Sunday in 2024. And we talked about last week how the Paul continued to pray us in what he was pressing for was the prize he set before us, even at this stage of life and where he was at in his ministry. And he said that was the key for him, so I continue to pursue after that that I've been apprehended for. God saves him. And he saved him and saved him home one day. And Paul said, I'm continuing to pursue that. And so if we look on a little further, as we're in the second Sunday now, I want to remind us as believers that he, what he said here in verse 17, he wrote to the Corinthians, he was said, therefore, in view of what he had already said, he said, if any person be in Christ, they are a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are coming. For every one that has been saved by the grace of God, he said it this way on Ephesians chapter 2, in verse 1, he said that we who were dead in trespasses and sins, hallelujah, he has brought us out, praise God, hallelujah, saved us, glory to God, made us a new creation in Christ. And we need to remind ourselves of that truth sometimes. Because you said it, Brother Geraldine, in your prayer, mentioned in the uh, teaching out of Timothy, and it's looking at uh, some other passages. The frailty of our old man and how that he troubles us still as believers. And so we have to be reminded or remind ourselves, I believe, that <clears throat> though we we're at one time dead in our trespasses and sins. Hallelujah. We've been made alive in Christ. Saved by grace through faith that not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, not a word of God. <coughs> the salvation of God has come into the life of every born again believer. And the glory to God as we begin this new year we can tell others and remind those as we stand here today and listen, hallelujah, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God still saves sinners. Hallelujah. And he shows us that truth. And we want to be reminded of that because <clears throat> for us as human beings, we do deal with time. God's not bound by it. But you and I, Brother Gerald said this morning, it really goes, when we look back at it, it didn't seem as if it took very long to get from birth to where a lot of us are now. But you see, in viewing that and knowing that, we do look at things like we're starting a new year. 2024, sometimes we may have a, a difficult day and we'll say, well, tomorrow is always a new day. We can, hopefully it'll be one we can accomplish or do whatever it is that we need to do. And so if we start these new years, in time we want to remind ourselves of some truth. And one of them is that in Christ we are made a new creation. The opportunity to serve God is there, hallelujah, for us. We can do things that we could not do before God saved us. Because now we can honor Him. We can bring glory <coughs> to His name. We can actually, as we said this morning, Brother Gerald, we can actually, hallelujah, Overcome, praise God, this old man and this old nature, I believe, by the power of God. And so we have that great hope as believers <clears throat> that we, as Paul said, he's pressing forward for you and I, we want to remind ourselves that we have been saved by God's grace, hallelujah, and that we are new creations. And in view of that, praise God, I'm going to say that when I... If we talk about, we look back, but we don't stay there, hallelujah, we don't look forward. We're looking, hallelujah, ahead to what's before us. But praise God, we want to be able to say and know in our own hearts, no matter where we may be at in life, that glory to God, we can remind ourselves again that in the year 2024, I can bring glory to his mind. I can pray to him. I can worship him. Hopefully, by the grace of God, I can be a, a blessing to somebody else. Hallelujah. And so I thought about what he told us. <coughs> Jesus, <coughs> excuse me, Jesus in Matthew 11 said some things that I want to 
share with you. It's a familiar passage of Scripture. Jesus is there. He's talked to them. And of course, he's talking uh, or giving some of these different uh, things that's to take place and what's going to happen. But here in verse 25, he says to him this. He said, At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent. He was speaking about the wise and the prudent of this world. He was speaking about they were things that people, you know, when they were questioning things, well, how can you really believe there's a God? How do you know that God's one day going to hallelujah, you know, take you home, praise God, and you're going to forever live in his presence? A lot of things that the intellect of man cannot ever comprehend. Now here's what he said. But you have revealed them in the baby. He's made truth known. You see, it's what you said this morning, Brother Gerald. We don't need to get high-minded if we've been blessed with the good things of this life. We need to recognize they come, hallelujah, from the hand of God. Every good gift comes down from Him, hallelujah. And so we need to remind ourselves of those truths. Well, you see... If we've had the revelation of who Jesus is, then we ought not to think more highly of ourselves, but we ought to give God praise and honor and glory. Hallelujah. That He revealed Himself unto us. <clears throat> I can look back in my life and I look out here some and see some of us as when we were young and a lot of things that we thought we needed. A lot of times that we didn't recognize, and I surely didn't, I know, until God made Himself known to me. Hallelujah. They were just truths I could not get a hold of, things concerning God. But then, hallelujah, Jesus, praise God. He come along and he revealed this unto one like myself. And I can look out and I see other fellow believers that was in the same condition, didn't know God, but God in his great mercy, hallelujah, revealed himself unto them. And he saw it, praise God. And so, he says here, Jesus says, Even so, Father... For it seemed good in thy sight. He said, All things are delivered unto me and my Father. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save or except the Son. But here is the glory. And he to whomsoever the Son will be given. So how did I come to know it's really a God? Well, I thankful I was raised and I, you know, to hear the word of God. I lived in an area where God's word was preached. But I want you to know one thing. Ultimately, it had to be God that revealed himself on the yes. Hallelujah. He's the one praying God. See, faith would come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And as that word, hallelujah, came forward, whether it was in a testimony or, you know, a word of God being shared, or whether it was in the very creation that God set before me, or the testimony and lives of others, of the prayers that people made. But I do know that ultimately, hallelujah, he revealed himself, hallelujah, unto me. And I praise him for that, boy. I tell you, and I want to remember, I want to remind myself in this journey, I've been made a new creation in Christ. And so Jesus then said in verse 28, Come unto me. All ye that labor are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. So I want to remind myself, I, I've already worried some in, in 2024. I've made sure that I got in a little time to do some worrying, you know, because it seems to be part of the nature that I possess, that fallen nature. And so he tells me, though, he said, when these things uh, of life begin to burden us, when, you know, we are heavy laden with them, he says, if you'll come unto me, I'll give you rest. It's a reminder to us, hallelujah. And what I want to emphasize again to us, that when we find ourselves anxious about the things of this life, that glory to God, we can still remember the promise of God, come unto me. And we can find, hallelujah, that comfort and strength that's needed. I don't, I'm not going to tell you, that all your problems will go away. I'm not going to tell you that everything will get solved. But I will tell you this, that you can have a peace, the Bible says, that passes all knowledge, hallelujah, the peace of God. And so if we begin this year, we'll remind ourselves because, <coughs> excuse me, Brother Gerald had mentioned earlier this morning <coughs> that we're not really sure what all is going to take place and what's, what's going on in our world today. But no but man never has. But Jesus says, I'll give you rest. <clears throat> but then he tells us, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all, I'm sorry. <clears throat> he 
take my yoke upon you. And here's what I want to get over and learn of me. <clears throat> Jesus says to you and I as believers, and I realize I'm here in the Gospels and Jesus is talking to his disciples and those that follow him. That's what we're going to deal with more than anything. And he's speaking to the nation of Israel. <clears throat> where he came into his own. To his own received him not. So what fell out to you and I, hallelujah, was the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. As a result of that. <clears throat> but he's saying to us here, as he does throughout the word of God, if you'll come unto me and you'll follow me, he said, learn of me. And when I begin to look a little bit and think about what he was saying, because what I want us to look at is a little bit of concerning the followers of God that we begin this year. Being, and really in a sense, that the word followers came from, or it was a, the root word of the word disciples, as far as the Greek words are concerned. And what we want to do, hallelujah, as we continue on in the year 2024, we really want to ask God to help us to continue to follow Him because what He said is Remember? And he told him, and he said, Peter said, follow him. When he called him out, hallelujah, not only there on the seaside after he had experienced the resurrection, but when he came by, glory to God, he told them, he said, to those as the fishermen or the publican, the tax collector, whoever it may have been, he would simply tell them, follow me. And for the believer, it's one of the things that we need to ask God to help to renew in our hearts then we're going to follow Jesus. Then we're going to stay close behind Him, praise God, and learn of Him to recognize. You know, He said over in the book of Matthew chapter 10 and another place in Luke, He told us how much so that we ought to be followers of Him, so much so that the everything else that we love in this life, whether it be father or mother or son or daughter or wife or whatever it may be of the things of this life, it would pale in comparison our desire to follow Him. Because we recognize that, as we said just a minute ago, all the good things, hallelujah, that we experience in this life, but more so that we'll experience in eternity, hallelujah, or in Him. That's where the true riches are. That's why Paul was exhorting Timothy again and said, tell them not to trust in uncertain riches. The things of this life are very ever-changing. They might, some it's amazing to me that, because I can't even think in the right terms of being there, but in, in reality, a guy could be a billionaire today and one of those fellows could be a, a pauper tomorrow. Because the world changes. And there are many things that's, you know, in that room. So he tells us, he says, listen, learn of me. And he says, that I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest in your souls. It tells me that well, I tell you, you said this morning, Brother Jerry, it was hitting me that <clears throat> the old nature that I have is combative. He's, in fact, you go read through the works of the flesh, and it's all there. Now that I seek to, you know, look for my good. But he says, Jesus said, if you'll learn me, he said, you'll find that I'm meek and lowly in heart. What Jesus said, he said, I know I have power. The power of the universe. He even let them know. He said, listen, they're called down on these from you legions of angels. But what he was saying to you and I as a believer, to remember, hallelujah, whatever it is, what position we may be in, is to recognize that glory to God ultimately, hallelujah, it's him. It's all about him. And he says then to you and I as a believer, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So he wanted us to recognize that yes, we're going to hallelujah need to follow after him. And I know sometimes that, you know, Peter had a difficulty with it there at the seaside because he, he decided he had inquired of Jesus, well, what about the other disciple? You know, you're telling me to follow, you know, follow you. Whatever it may be. And, and Peter doesn't seem enough to know. He was there, hallelujah, when they came to get Jesus and they carried him down and they beat him beyond recognition of a human being and set him upon a bloody cross and 
put him to death, killed him. Peter had seen all of that, so he said, well, what about this? I mean, follow you, you know. But what about the other side? What about undoubtedly John, the disciple that Jesus loved? What about him? Because when we follow him, hallelujah, we need to recognize and realize that he's telling us, he's letting us know, I want you to come after me. But he said, I want you to let my yoke is easy, my burden's really light. But we'd say, how can that be? You know, because of all we deal with in this life. The difficulties that we face. But it is when we keep our eyes on him. When we stay, hallelujah, in step with Jesus. He's the one, glory to God, that I've got to keep my eyes on. I, I'm thinking about, there's a passage of Scripture, I believe, it may be in the book of Hebrews or it's else in, uh, in Romans. But he tells us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith. A reminder to us, that's who I've got to keep my eyes on, hallelujah, because it, that things are going to happen in this life. It's everything. But he's telling me to, to learn of Him. <laughs> To learn more of how Jesus lived. And so, when I do that, I thought about this as a passage of Scripture in Ephesians chapter 4. And he tells us a little bit about dealing with the old man, but how to live, how to live as a new man. See, God saves us. He puts within us how to live the Spirit of God. The Bible said we read in Corinthians. Uh, there that he said we're a new creation in Christ. We've been made new. Now this is going to continue to pass away. Be the best we can take care of it, but it's going. It's part of this earth. But I want you to know that new man, that new creation that we are, hallelujah, in Christ. Glory to God is just getting closer and more ready, hallelujah, for the eternal home. And so he tells us. He says here in verse 17 of the Ephesians 4, he says, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth, he's telling our fellow believers, walk not as other Gentiles walk, and he's speaking to those Gentile believers, in the vanity of their mind or the futility, but always looking toward the arm of flesh, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to the seriousness to work all uncleanness with them, you know, they're still living in sin. And remember what he said? Paul said in chapter 1 of Peter, I apostle of Jesus Christ for the will of God to the saints which are in us. He's reminding us his belief. Well, Brother Gerald was reading to us in the morning Sunday school with him. He starts talking to the believers. Don't get high-minded about the blessings that God gives you as believers. He's not telling the world that because the world is going to live <laughs> like the world. But believers, hallelujah, we've been given the capacity, the power, hallelujah, to be more like Jesus, to live a life that will glorify Him. And so he says... To him he says, but you, in verse 20, have not so learned Christ. <coughs> and remember what he had told them. He said, learn me. Jesus said to those disciples, he said, you know, listen, you know, take my yoke upon you. In other words, get into the traces. Glory to God. Give your life to Jesus and praise God. Begin to walk with him. Follow me. Hallelujah. <coughs> and when we trust him, praise God. When we recognize him, as Paul said here, this is what we've learned. If you have, if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off. So there is a responsibility, see, as I begin this year, for belief. He had said to us here, glory to God, what the old nature is like. A little bit of it. Give us a little description. There's a lot of things you can read in here if you want to to give you a real in-depth of what the old nature is, and it's present, and it's there. But he's saying to us now, that's not what you've learned of Christ. That's not what the Holy Spirit of God that indwells you now has taught you 
and how he's led you and directed you. How he's told you to study the Word of God. Hallelujah. To know what the will of God is for your life. So he says, you've not learned it. He said, so if so be that you've heard it and been taught by him, that you put off concerning the former conversation the old man, put him off. Deal with that reality that I guess that's like it was in 2023. I'm still in 2024 going to put to death that old man. He's still going to rise up and seek for his way. He's still going to want his old area to be number one. He's still going to encourage me to do the thing that satisfies me and not necessarily that glorifies God. He's going to tell me, hallelujah, it's better to be served than to serve. And so I'm going to have to recognize that and realize that as I begin this year and know that he's still on my trail. I don't remember how it is now, but I remember years ago, Brother Mike said that, I believe it was him, it was some preacher we had here that I've, I've listened to at times, that talked about how that they would take uh, when somebody was crucified and they put a dead man on and when they go for as a punishment you had to carry him around because in a sense he said it's a it really is a picture of the believer because we have been born again we have new life in Christ we're a new man but we still carry the old man around why do you think sometimes you respond to anger? Why do you think sometimes that you say things that would be better not said? Why do you think sometimes it is that our eyes still desire the things of this life? Why is it that we think a lot of times that we want the things, or even as he said in the book of Timothy, how would it be that a believer who understands that every good gift comes down from the Father, hallelujah, with whom change is not. How do you think that he would say to them, don't be high-minded about your riches? Because we carry the old man with us. And so he seeks to have his way. So what Paul's encouraging us, you see here, or Jesus said, he says, just, you know, learn of me. And he told us now, and Paul did, he's writing to the Ephesians people, he said, I tell you now, when you live this way, when it's the old man, he said, that's not what you've learned from Jesus. And recognize that. Don't, don't sit down and give up. Don't beat yourself to death. But glory to God, confess your sin. Hallelujah. Uh, unto him, praise God. And sometimes when we've offended and hurt others, we're going to confess some to them. But glory to God, to recognize that, hallelujah, and to get up, praise God, and go on with Jesus. Trust him. He said, boy, I'll tell you. And so he reminds us that there is a new man. And so he tells us how to do that. In verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Let there be, hallelujah, I tell you what, sometime this old human man ain't full of vitality. In fact, I can tell you when I got up this morning, I was thinking, I'm going to have to drink a little coffee. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get going or not. But you know, the thing is, he don't always, he ain't always vital. But I tell you what, the spiritual man should be. It should be a spiritual vitality to me. Glory to God that even when I may not be in the flesh feeling all that good, hallelujah, in the spirit of my mind ought to be recognized. Boy, Jesus, let me get up this morning. Glory to God, he's the one, hallelujah, that's kept me here, got a purpose for my life. Hallelujah, help me to live that. And he said, put on then have the new man. Recognize, God's given me, hallelujah, what I've got to have, hallelujah, to be able to live, hallelujah, for him. You know, when I looked at it, I thought about what he said in talking about a new man, hallelujah, the word followers, as I said earlier, actually was the Greek word for it that we translated as followers. The root word for it, the word disciples that they use. I won't even try to call the name. But it's M-A-T-H-E-T-E-S and M-A-N-T-H-A-N-O. The Greek word was. But what that is, is a disciple is basically a learner, a pupil, and a follower simply means to be a 
So he's telling me, reminding me again to, if I don't want to do, I mean, anything else, I'll tell you what to do. Imitate Jesus. And glory to God, if you do that, you'll do it right. You know, I thought about, he said this, here in this passage of Scripture, he says, Now we put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So that new creation that's in me, hallelujah, is always bent toward doing, hallelujah, God's will. That's why there's a battle sometimes when I do the opposite. It wouldn't even matter to me if God the Holy Spirit wasn't there, but he's saying to me, that new creation is saying, listen, <clears throat> that's the old man. Follow after Jesus. Look above, hallelujah. Keep your eyes upon him. You know, I thought about a couple of verses that Paul said in this way as an example, and we would want to be so in 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. We may come back here in a minute, but Paul was right to those believers, and he had really had to talk to them about some situations. He said, but be ye followers of me. But he said, even as I am also of Christ. And so we would want to be. Paul, I believe, looking on his night, he was telling Thessalonica people some things he wanted to be because he said, we've done our best to try to be what we should be in your presence and here before you if we do it in and I think any of us would desire to do that in our life, that our those behind us could follow us. But we only need the encouragement to do that as we follow Jesus. I mean, it's just that way, like I've said before, we all feel like we've got some part of our, you know, it's a genetic thing that comes down. That's the reason I fly off the handle sometimes. That's why I, you know, do some of the things that I do. And they probably some real, I'm sure... There's something to that, but you know what happens to that? That's the part that he said. That's the old one. You see, the genetics that I need, hallelujah, to be expressed now is the genetics that I get from Jesus, hallelujah, in him. He says, so come unto me. Glory to God. Trust me, Paul went on and said this too in 1 Thessalonians 1 and 6. He said, and you became followers of us and of the Lord. Have received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. And he told them, he reminded them, hallelujah, again, you became followers of us, but this and of the Lord. He said, only as we walk with him. Paul recognized, and we talked about this, and actually there's some areas that Brother Gerald talked about this morning, Sunday school struck me, that is in this realm that Paul said, the good that I would, I do not, the evil I would not, I do, so you know, the best man that I am. He said, I know, there's areas and times that I fail, but he said, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to be sure. And I can still remember, I go way back, hallelujah, and remember the first time that God, the Holy Ghost, so broke my heart and crushed my heart that I had to say, I'm sorry. You say, well, that's not a hard thing to do, is it? Well, let me tell you what, it was hard for me. God help me. But I want you to know one thing God showed me. I believe that truth to my family. And he did it through the word of God. The preaching of God's word. And so, <clears throat> he tells us, you know, to know the difference in the old man and the new man. Recognize that. And so, and Paul is encouraging. So we can encourage others. Follow me as I follow the Lord. And then ultimately what we find out in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 21, I'm going to go back there. If we're anyone in Christ, we become a new creation. A creation. Old, old things pass away, and all things become new. And we go on to the rest of the first day. And all things are of God. He has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And here's what it is as I go into I've been made a new creation in Christ. I'm to learn of Him. And boy, I'll tell you, in the midst of that, this thing of the conquer I get. Hallelujah. I find out that Job's not so far. That I find out how to follow Jesus is by far the best thing to do. That I realize if I put the old man to death, how to the new man to live, the glory to God, everybody be blessed. And so I find then that Jesus, he says, has. Reconcile me to himself. 
God as to Christ and hath given to me or to you to believe the ministry of reconciliation. You know what that begins at? That begins right at your house. Yes, you give glory to God that opportunity because you're a new creation in Christ. Now you, hallelujah, have a ministry, <coughs> a service <coughs> that can honor God and bless others. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us. Boy, that's something. <coughs> the old sinner like me, he said, I'm going to commit to you a word of can tell somebody what Jesus has done for me, hallelujah. I can tell my family. Glory to God, I can let them know, hallelujah, that your old daddy could have never said, I'm sorry, if God the Holy Ghost had to say, and to have mercy on his soul. That he can mercy. Glory to God. And he tells us, <clears throat> we now are ambassadors for Christ. That's something. I mean, old rich like me, and I know good and well, I know we ain't going to pray and have to tell it, but there's a lot of folks on what the heat no way to look what the time is. That he'll ever be any good to anybody. That he'll ever, if he got saved, as that, as that one fellow told me one time, he said, well, I'm still waiting. That was 10 years later. He said, I ain't sure yet if you really going to stay or not. I said, well, amen. And that's good. That's good. I don't believe that. Give me a, that's one good way to Help me to realize, because you see, that's amazing that he would take something like me and make me an ambassador for him. He said I could represent him, glory to God. Whether anybody else ever wanted me to represent, Jesus said, you are my ambassador, hallelujah, to this world. And what am I supposed to do? I ain't know me talking nothing about me. God, the seats of God, if we pray to you in Christ, be reconciled to God. That's my message. What it ought to be. For he hath made him to be sin for us, and you know sin, of oh, Jesus, that we might be made the righteousness of God. And so I'm going to say to you, we begin this new year. Hallelujah. You're a new creation. God made you that way you're saved. You ain't saved, hallelujah. You got an opportunity. God so loved the world. <coughs> what you'll call on. But I want you to know that glory to God. He, hallelujah, made you a new creation. If you'll learn of him, if you'll follow him, if you'll put that old man to death, hallelujah, let the new man live, I want you to know what you can do. You can tell somebody else about it. Father, we thank you and praise for allowing us to be here this morning. Give us a little time together. We are praying that if there's one that doesn't know you is saved, I pray God you are saved. Lord Jesus. And I pray for us as believers. Help us, Lord. Fulfill our ministry of reconciliation. We love what Jesus has done. We remember all of those upon our prayer days. All of those not able to be with us. I know traveling on the road Sunday. So we ask God to keep it with them. And help them, Lord, as they go forth and they're about, that they'll be able, hallelujah.